What is crack lacking y'all? My name is Oriafa and I'm a first year medical student. And in this video, I will be sharing my MCAT study schedule and give general tips on how to structure your scheduling during the school year. Take it from me, trying to study for the MCAT while also trying to do well in classes was not easy whatsoever. And that semester was honestly the most brutal for me, but knowing how to schedule and manage your time really makes the biggest difference. I did want to make it clear though, if you're looking for step-by-step -step how to study for the MCAT, this is not the video for you, but I did make a video on how to study for the MCAT. So if you want more guidance in that aspect, check out that video. However, I do not expect you to copy my schedule verbatim solely because it's important to adapt to what works best for you and the situation you're in. Anyway, let me stop wasting time and just get into the tips and the schedule. The first thing I wanted to say regarding scheduling for MCAT studying is that you should try best to stick to the schedule, but remember that it's not set in stone. If you feel that something's not working and that you want to edit the amount of hours you're spending or however you want to change it, don't hesitate to do it. But it's important to know when you're initially making your schedule that you need to be realistic. To be realistic, you have to take into account what day is your MCAT, how much time do you have until the MCAT to study, how many credits are you going to be taking while you're studying, how much time do you think you'll be able to commit to studying in a day. What's your goal score and what work you need to put in to get to it? So many things go into your ability to study for the MCAT and it's best that you take all of those things into consideration when making your schedule. And in addition to that, when you are making your schedule, be sure to factor in days that you do not want to study. For example, on my schedule, I excluded Christmas, New Year's, Sundays. It's okay to have some days that you want to take for yourself, but you have to factor it into your schedule. Before you make your schedule take a diagnostic practice test in fact take it as soon as you can just so you know where you are because that score can determine how long you need to study or how hard you need to study so even if you're not necessarily about to start your MCAT studying immediately after taking it it's probably best you take a diagnostic exam before you even register for the MCAT so you can be realistic with how much progress you need to make and then you'll be able to give yourself ample time to study okay let's get into the specifics on December 11th I took my first diagnostic exam and I knew I had to take my exam in April and improve my score by at minimum 10 points. So based off that I decided to start studying basically immediately. So that winter break I started studying for the MCAT on December 14th meaning I spent about four and a half months studying total which is about the length of a semester. And honestly while you're balancing school other commitments with your MCAT studying it's better to have more time than less in general but I wouldn't really exceed six or seven months just because by the end of it you might be burnt out and start forgetting content and it would make it harder ultimately also I would recommend trying to have a lighter academic schedule while you're doing your MCAT studying I personally that semester took 19 credits and even though that's the least amount of credits I've ever taken at once I felt like a certified tightrope walker in the circus the way I was trying to balance it. Like I was really juggling out here. I tried to stay closer to the 15 to 17 credit range during that time, especially if you have other commitments, which most pre-meds do. For me, I think 4.5 months was a good sweet spot, largely because I started during winter break. That's why I'm trying to get this video out during winter break. But in those days, I didn't really have much else to do and I could really power through a lot of the chapters for that first month or so of content review. Any Anyway, when I made my schedule, I was sure to put exact dates. That way I had set goals and I knew exactly what I was trying to achieve that day. So rather than just being like, okay, Monday I study Orgo. I said December 17th, I am studying chapter three of Orgo or whatever I had put. That way you're able to hold yourself accountable and see how on track you are. And as you're making that day by day schedule, look at how many chapters in all the books you want to cover there are. For example, Kaplan book sets have seven books and 12 chapters per book making it 84 chapters honestly I did not study all 84 of those chapters because I was using different methods for different 
subjects. Based on the books and resources that you want to use, look at how many chapters there are and see how many days you'll need to cover all those chapters. That way you can give yourself the required time for your content review. Personally, when I was on winter break, as well as on the weekends, I believe, I studied two chapters per day. And when I did have school, I was only studying one chapter per day. That way I'd have enough time to go to classes and do my schoolwork as well. What does studying a chapter entail? This is going to vary from person to person, but what I would do is I would read the chapter, highlight the chapter, annotate it however I'd like, and I would also recommend doing the practice questions at the end of the chapter if your books have any. Overall, you just need to make sure your understanding of that chapter is solid, especially if it's a high yield chapter. During the winter break when I was doing two chapters a day, I averaged studying for about nine hours per day. During the semester, that number was closer to four to five hours. But please remember, this varies from person to person. And to stay on top of my own goals, it worked better for me to structure my schedule by goals as opposed to by how long I want to spend studying in a day. Meaning, if I said I'm going to do chapters 11 and 12 in one day, I'm going to do chapters 11 and 12 in that day, even if it takes me 16 hours to do. But for some people, it might be better for them to say, okay, I'm going to spend eight hours studying today. Different things work for different people. But for me, I found it better to measure my progress by output and what I was getting done as opposed to input and how much time I was putting in. So this is my general daily schedule by what subjects I would study on what days during winter break. And this is mostly just for the content review part. So on Mondays, I worked on general chemistry and cars. Tuesdays was biochemistry and biology. Wednesday was organic chemistry and physics. Thursday was biology and cars. Friday was just psych -soch. I'd spent more time doing psych -soch. Saturdays, I did biochem and gen chem. On Sundays, I was resting just like the Lord did. Now I want to talk about some edits I made to my schedule once I actually started studying. I had initially planned to read the psych -soch textbook that Kaplan had, as well as the Cars book. But when I was actually in the school year trying my best to manage everything, I learned that the best thing for me would be to budget my time. If reading the textbook is not the most effective way for you to study for a certain subject, don't do it. For example, instead of reading the psych -soch textbook, I found it much faster and effective to read the MCAT Bros. 3 100 page document, which I will link in the description. I just used that resource mostly for my psych -soch section, and that ended up being what I scored highest in. That document took way less time and really just gave me everything I needed to know. To be totally honest, I only ended up touching a few pages of that psych -soch book. So the book became more of a secondary resource that I would use if I ever wanted to, you know, reference an image or something. And for cars, if you really have have no idea how to even think of approaching the section. Maybe reading the first few chapters might be helpful for you, but in reality, it's not necessary. Different methods work for different people, but I feel like most people find getting consistent practice with the car section is what helps the most. So that would mean using a website such as Jack Weston, which I will also link below, to do maybe one or two cars passages every day because the car section is mostly skill-based. You do not need to know anything in your head content wise beforehand to go into the car section. You just have to have strategy and the best way to work on your strategy and hone in your technique is through practice. That's all I really have to say for the content review phase of scheduling. Now let's move on to the practice phase. So as you're approaching your MCAT day and winding down on the content, it's best to shift your main focus to doing practice problems and practice exams. But even with that, the content review never actually stops because as you're exposed to more and more questions, you may realize that there is still some concepts that you don't fully understand. And if that happens, you shouldn't just go, content review is over, I'm just gonna keep practicing and just hope I catch on. No, if that happens, if you find that you don't really understand a concept once you are put to the test, it's time to go back to the books, go back to Khan Academy, and go to any resources you have to fill in those gaps, especially if it's high yield. Personally, I took two practice exams closer to the beginning of my studying, one of them being the diagnostic, and one I took on January 14th just to see my progress so far with content review. So yeah, I took those two, but during the eight weeks leading up to the actual test day, I took 
a practice exam every week and that day was usually on a Saturday. After taking that exam, rest for the rest of Saturday, rest for Sunday, and on Monday, I would review the exam. So I took 10 MCAT practice tests total. And when you're reviewing the practice test, it's important to review every single question in great detail, whether you got it right or you got it wrong. Because sometimes you only got something right because you guessed. But you need to know why every option that's not the right answer is wrong and why what's right is correct. And as you do this, you're going to be able to pick up on patterns of what you're struggling with and what you're strong at. And once you have that, you'll be able to budget your time even better. That way you can spend less time at what you're strong at and more time focusing on what you need to focus on. For organization purposes, when I was reviewing my test, I did a why I missed it chart. And I have a Google Sheets with multiple tabs for each time I took the exam that way I can easily flip back and forth and compare how I'm doing in certain subjects from exam to exam in the why I missed it sheet I wrote the section of the question so that's if it's chem phys psych soch cars bio biochem the question number the subject the topic and why I missed the question and once I have the topics of each question that I got wrong I can see am I seeing patterns and I'm able to point out okay I did not do well in bio biochem which types of questions am I getting wrong the most? Oh, I'm not really doing well in the bioenergetics question. Oh, I'm really failing at the amino acids questions. That way you can focus your studying. And the only way to truly grow is to know what you're doing wrong and continually try to get better at it. But you can't do that if you don't know what you're doing wrong. That was kind of a side note, but I thought it was important to say. And if you're someone who really enjoys structure and wants a digital format, that can help you to stay on top of your studying. And if you're looking for a more affordable MCAT prep, I would check out Magoosh. Magoosh is affordable, organized, and flexible online test prep that can help students prepare for tests like the LSAT, SAT, MCAT, and others. And I wanted to show you guys everything that it has to offer. It is so extensive. As you can see, they have multiple study plans, but you can also change it to the six month plan, the one month plan, or the two month plan. So there are plenty of options depending on how far away your MCAT is. And like I talked about in this specific video, they have a day by day schedule. So if you go ahead and press all days, you can see what you're meant to do for each individual day and they make it really easy for you by putting everything you need to do right on the dashboard. As you can see, they have a checklist right here for you so you can keep track of your goals and it includes various lessons and different practice questions. And on the dashboard, it has different scores for each subject. That way you can see where you're strong and where you're weak. They have different lessons for the day, a video library, practice questions, and you can do either custom practice or a time practice test the way that the MCAT would be done. It makes it nice and easy for you to review your practice test in detail. It even has its own why I missed it chart like I was talking about in this video. And they even have this beautiful list of resources all in one place so you can get whatever help you need. In addition to that, they have a cars for the day passage that way it makes it nice and easy for you to get your daily cars practice and stay on top of it as you can see magoosh really implements all the best strategies if you want to check it out use the link in my description it really helps me out a lot anyway that's the end of the video like comment subscribe share check out this video if you want to learn more about how to study for the mcat and how i was able to increase my score by 12 points adios